Good morning, Jerusalem. Is it well with your soul? I pray that you remain safe and continuing to take those precautions that not only protect you, but also your loved ones. Let's not drop the ball now, and let's definitely not stop praying for God's protection of us all. Before I get started this morning, I want to wish Sister Grant's great aunt, Miss Eula B. Pope, who we affectionately call A.V., a very happy and blessed 109th birthday. That's right, you're correct. 109 years. A.V., you are a blessing to our family. And we love you and thank God for his grace to you and the longevity of life that he has blessed you with. Enjoy the parade today. And again, happy birthday. Turn with me now to Jeremiah chapter 20, verses 7 through 9. That's Jeremiah chapter 20, verses 7 through 9. And there we'll find these words written. O Lord, thou hast deceived me. And I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocketh me. For since I spake, I cried out. I cried out violence and spoil, because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me, and a derision daily. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones and I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay. Let's pray. God, how we thank you for life life more abundantly. We thank you for Jesus Christ son by love and we thank you for your Holy Spirit who dwells with us and keeps us and guides us. God, we ask now that you give us ears to hear your word, hearts to believe your word, and wills to carry out your divine will in our life. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, we thanksgiving. Amen and amen. This morning, I want to talk about I'm into something and I can't shake a loose. That's right. I'm into something and I can't shake a loose. You know, this quarter, our Sunday school lessons have been focusing on the prophets of the Old Testament. And I want to thank Brother Roy Jones for his teaching and review of the Sunday school lessons each Saturday at 6 p.m. And speaking of Brother Jones, I want to also congratulate him on his retirement after serving over 25 years in the Clinton Public School System. Brother Jones, you deserve a break. But now, maybe Sister Jones can get some of those things done that's been on that honey-do list for a while. Well, let me get on to the message. As we consider this text this morning, we need to first understand that the prophets of old and all the great men of the Bible were just ordinary people. We need to be reminded of this often because there's a tendency among us to place them on a different level and to think of them as being unlike us. Now, there is a sense in which the prophets were different from us in that they made great accomplishments. But we need to understand that they did not make these accomplishments because they were different. But these very ordinary people became great because they allowed themselves to be used by a God who does great things. And each of them, every last one of them, it might be said, as it was said of the prophet Elijah, that they were men of like passion, just like you and I. And the record of their experiences has been preserved for us, that we might be encouraged by their examples and profit from their mistakes, so that we might do a better job for the Lord. Well, Jeremiah was the prophet for the day of doom. He had the task of delivering the last message of warning to a people who were about to fall under the hammer of God's divine judgment. So the message he preached was not soft and easy, but they were words that were stern, strict, and severe. They were designed to impress upon the people the urgent need to repent. But the people who heard Jeremiah preach 
did not know about him what you and I know. You see, all they saw was a nuisance who was constantly preaching condemnation and judgment. All they saw was a loud mouth preacher giving them some bad news. But little did they realize that Jeremiah's harsh words came from a heart that was tender, sensitive, and affectionate. And although he may have sounded stern, he was sympathetic. Although he may have sounded cold and callous, Jeremiah really was a caring and compassionate individual. Now, publicly, Jeremiah did his job without blinking an eye. But in his private devotion, his eyes were filled with tears as he poured out his heart to God for his people. And that is why he is known as the weeping prophet. Well, as we consider the words of this text, there are three things we need to understand concerning the kind of man that Jeremiah was. The first thing we observe about him, and here's my first point, is that Jeremiah was a discouraged man. That's right. Jeremiah was a discouraged man. The first impression we get from these words are that they are from the mouth of a man who is deeply discouraged. See, to stand against the nation is no small thing. And if you remain faithful to the Lord, you too, my brothers and sisters, are likely to experience what Jeremiah experienced. But somebody will ask, how can a man of God be discouraged? I mean, after all, he is a man of God, right? Isn't he supposed to be strong and courageous and superhuman? Well, just to ask this question indicates a couple of things. First, it indicates that those who ask it fail to realize that Jeremiah was a man and not made out of wood or steel. He was real flesh and blood. Just like you and I, he had real psychological needs. He had real emotional needs and sensitivities like everyone else. He was subject to all the ills that affect everyone else. He preached and pleaded with the people. He prayed for them to turn to God, but he never saw a change in them or any indication that one was coming. And you know, that can be psychologically disturbing because you begin to wonder, is it something that you're not doing or did you misunderstand God or are you in the wrong business? But also, to ask that kind of question indicates that you never have been in the midst of a battle and you know very little about the real struggle for God. You see, you think that when the Holy Spirit is at work, the work is easy. Well, don't believe it. For as the Spirit works, a man is consumed in the work and he is restless until the work is accomplished. See, the Bible is realistic and honest it is a praise of man. It is true to life. And Jeremiah was discouraged. Listen, if you love God and man, you will pay a price. Your very concerns about them will bring you to despair. But if you don't care or don't think about God or the welfare of your fellow man, then you know nothing about Christian sacrifice and suffering. See, Jeremiah was a man against the flood and he was going to flood. He was discouraged because he was a man. That's right. Jeremiah was a real man. He was a very discouraged man. But watch this. In his discouragement, he took his complaint to the Lord. And thus, and here's my second point, that even though he was a discouraged man, Jeremiah was also a praying man. That's right. He took his complaint to the Lord because he was a praying man. Now, notice that I did not say that he took his praise or thanksgiving to the Lord, but I said he took his complaint to the Lord. Now, that might sound strange to some, but in a real prayer relationship, there's no pretense. See, you don't have to fake it till you make it with God, because with God, everything is out in the open. You Johnny Taylor fans should understand that. <laughs> but see, in human relationship, you can't risk full disclosure. You can't be that honest and open with people. For when something unexpected is heard or shared, 
People are shocked or in disbelief and they lose confidence in you and they see you in a different light. Especially if you claim to be a Christian and particularly if you're a preacher. But since God is all knowing, nothing you can say to him or share with him will surprise him, shock him, or knock him off his throne. Trust me, God can handle the truth. The question is, can you tell him the truth? In Luke chapter 18, verse 1, Jesus said, man ought to always pray and not faint. Now, if I am to be praying all the time, there are some times when I don't feel so chipper. There are times when I'm not in the best of moods. There are times when my get up and go has got up and went. There are times when I just don't want to be bothered. And there are times when I just want to stay in the bed, pull the covers over my head, and sleep my burdens away. So what do you do when you have those kind of days? Well, here's what you do. You tell God how you feel, and you pray anyway. The songwriter said, Oh, what peace we all can forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. All because we do not care. Everything to God in prayer. You see, much of the poverty and powerlessness of our prayer life is due to the fact that we not only do not carry everything to God in prayer, but much of what we do carry to God is not really true of our condition. Now, what I mean by that is this. See, we often make matters worse than they really are as if we can fool God. We say things like, Lord, nobody knows the trouble I sent. Yes, they do. For the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, they have no temptation taken you, but such as in common to man. That means you ain't the only one that's been through it. You ain't the only one going through it. And you're not the only one that's going to go through it. Or we'll say things like, Lord, I'm trying so hard to do your will. Well, are you ready? Well, maybe you need not to try so hard and start trusting God a little bit more. Listen, God does not get down and scold a man when, he, when his tiredness comes from his struggles and his tears are tears of compassion. And Jeremiah was in a real struggle. And because he had compassion for his people, he took his complaint to the Lord. Now, God's message at the beginning might have been misunderstood, but Jeremiah still took his complaint to God. Have you ever felt wrong by God? Or felt like he gave you an assignment that was too tough for you to handle? Or have you felt like you were inadequate for the task? Well, if so, take your burden to the Lord and just leave it there. Take your complaint to the Lord and just have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your trouble. He will hear your faintest cry and he'll answer by and by. And when you feel the prayer we're turning, you'll know that the fire is burning. You'll find that a little talk with Jesus makes everything all right. Yes, my brothers and sisters, Jeremiah's words in the text showed that he was a discouraged man. But even in his discouragement, he was a praying man and took his complaint to the Lord. And that is because, and here's my last point, Jeremiah was a consecrated man. That's right, he was a consecrated man. Now, one of the real tests of our commitment to God is seen when the going gets tough and you have to suffer personally for the cause. See, it's easy to go along when the going is good, but the real test is when the way gets dark as a result of doing good. You treat everybody right, but you still catch hell because folks treat you wrong. You are there for everyone else, but no one is there when you need them. You give all you got, but it's still not enough because everybody wants more. Yes, you find out what you're made of when the road meets the road, and the road is 110 degrees hot, and there's no sign of the road cooling down soon. Well, when you read the story by Jeremiah, you will discover that Jeremiah had delivered the message in front of the temple. And then if that didn't get all of it, the son of the priest slapped him in the face, put him in stocks, and kept him there all night. 
You know, I wonder how many of us can keep going when we personally suffer for doing right. I dare say, not too many. We said, I ain't got to put up with that, and we quit. We said, uh, this ain't what I bargained for, and we quit. We say, child, it ain't worth all this trouble, so we quit. Listen, if you can resign from a God-given task, then maybe he didn't assign it to you. Let me say that again. If you can resign from a God-given task, then maybe God didn't assign it to you. Maybe you don't have what Paul had when he said, for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe unto me if I preach not the gospel. But it's the love of Christ that constrains me. You see, when you are really sold out to the Lord, lock, stop, and bear, you might get down sometimes, but you won't give up. You may be hard pressed, but you will press on. See, in that dark hour of discouragement and depression, Jeremiah began to think about the situation, and he felt like throwing in the towel and turning in his resignation. He had reached the conclusion that this preaching business wasn't paying it out, and it wasn't going like he had planned. He said, Lord, you have deceived me when you promised me your help. I have given them your message because you are stronger than I am. But now I'm the laughing stock in the city. I'm being mocked by everybody. You have never once let me speak a word of kindness to them. God has always been disaster, horror, and destruction. And no one they scoff and mock and make my name a household joke. He said, Lord, I just feel like I failed in my mission. And so Jeremiah determined that he was not going to preach anymore or speak in God's land. But if you would allow me I can see Jeremiah in my sanctified imagination walking away from the temple and Jeremiah is walking to his house. He's closing the door behind him and Jeremiah gets to his house and he sits down in his chair and man, he's just upset. He's there falling down his chair and he drops his face in his hand and he's just upset and don't know what to do. He's disappointed. He's disgusted. He's discouraged. But as Jeremiah sat there, he goes on inside of him. He gets burning, and his heart gets burning, and his legs get to shake, and his feet get to pat. Jeremiah got himself up, and he hurries back to the temple, and reports back to duty. Somebody said, Jeremiah, I thought you had quit. Jeremiah said, look, I tried to quit, but his word was in my heart as a burning fire. It was like fire shut up in my bones. And I just can't hold my feet. Jeremiah said, look, y'all, I'm into something. And I just can't shake it loose. I felt like God had deceived me, but I just can't shake it loose. I'm the laughing stock of the city, but I can't shake it loose. I suffer reproach and persecution, but I can't shake it loose. Is there anybody listening to me this morning? Know what I'm talking about. Are you into something with God and you just can't shake it loose? You see, a long time ago, I sold out to the Lord. And since that time, I've been discouraged. Since that time, I've been disappointed. I've been let down. I've been betrayed. I've been lied on. I've been talked about. I've been misused and abused and misunderstood. I felt unappreciated. And many times, I felt like giving up. Or oh, like Jeremiah, I'm into something and I can't shake it loose. Well, if I could call upon Jeremiah and ask him a question, I would say, Jeremiah, what is it that you're into that you can't shake a loop? I believe this is what Jeremiah would say. He would say, it's not so much that I'm into something as it is something that's in me. Oh God, I like that. Listen, the poet put it this way. Something within me that holds the rain. Something within me that banishes the pain. Something within me, I cannot explain. All I know, there's something within. Listen, I want to know if somebody listening to me this morning that's got something within. What is it that won't let you hold your peace? Walter Al Hawkins asked, us, asked this question. He said, what is this that I feel deep inside? What is this 
that keeps setting my soul on fire. Whatever it is, whatever it is, it won't let me hold my peace. He said, it makes me love my enemies and it makes me love my friends and it won't let me be ashamed to tell the world I've been born again. He said, what is this that makes me do right when I would do wrong? When I'm low and down, he gives me a song. Whatever it is, whatever it is, I tell you, it won't let me hold my peace. Listen, y'all, I tell you what it is. It's the word of the Lord empowered by the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that leads us and guides us into God's truth. It's the Holy Spirit that empowers us to serve the Lord. It's the Holy Spirit that enlightens us and illuminates us to God's word. Oh yeah, it's the Holy Spirit that convinces us and convicts us and converts us to Jesus Christ. And it's the Holy Spirit that secures our salvation and seals us to the day of redemption. And that redemption, my brothers and sisters, has been supplied for us through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Jesus was a man who understood disappointment and discouragement. He was a man who was despised and rejected men. A man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. But he was also a praying man. For he would get up a great while before day and pray to his father. He taught his disciples how to pray. And he prayed for us in his high priestly prayer in John chapter 17. Jesus was also a consecrated man. He was consecrated and committed to the will and mission of his heavenly father. For I heard him declaring the God, not my will, but thy will be done. And because of his consecration and his commitment, he went all the way to Calvary where he hung, bled, and died for sin and to satisfy the justice of God. Oh yeah, I tell you, he died out on Calvary. They took him off that cross and they put him in a borrowed tomb where he stayed there for three days and night, but early Sunday morning, he got the crate with all power and authority in his hand. And because of that, I tell you, I'm wrapped up, I'm tied up, and I'm tangled up in Jesus. And the world can't do me no harm. Yes, I tell y'all, I'm into something, and I just can't shake it loose. And I'm glad to know it's God and His Holy Spirit that's keeping me until He comes again. My brothers and sisters, are you tied up in something? Are you into something? Does the Holy Spirit have you tied up in the Lord that no matter what comes your way, even if you get discouraged, you're going to take your complaint to the Lord in prayer and know that he'll meet you there. My God, my God, I'm in the sun and I just can't shake it loose. Let's pray. Mm. God, I thank you this morning for your word. And I thank you for even in the midst of discouraging times, you are there to help us. You are there to guide us and keep us and let us know that you will never leave us nor forsake us because you gave us your precious Holy Spirit to dwell within us and to let us know of your presence. Thank you, God, for all that you do. But most of all, thank you for who you are. Keep us in your care and we'll bless your name forever. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. My God, my God. I don't know about you, but I feel good this morning, y'all. Listen, as we go away, let's remember what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, our hearts have felt. And don't forget, as you go, forgive somebody. Because someone needs forgiveness now. And there's an opportunity to present itself, share the love of Jesus Christ with those you come in contact with. And remember, at Jerusalem, we are ministering with eternity in view.